Max Chilton is mainly known for his stints with Marussia over a two-year period in Formula 1. But before Formula 1, he started his car racing career in the T-Car series where he did really well finishing third overall in 2005 and second in 2006. In fact, he actually won most of the races in 2006 as well. The Brit then made his move into British Formula 3 for the 2007 season and actually was able to get an exemption to enter as he was under 16 years of age at the time when he did make his debut, but he wouldn't end up scoring a single point in the championship until 2008 where he finished 10th in the championship scoring 72 points. But in 2009, he would easily double this tally, scoring 171 points, which was good for fourth place in the championship. This was the same championship which future Formula 1 star Daniel Ricciardo ended up winning. Chilton would move to GP2 in 2010, but in his first two seasons in the category, he wouldn't make a lot of noise, never finishing higher than 5th in any race, and finished 25th and 20th in the two GP2 seasons respectively. It wasn't until 2012 where he became a contender for the championship and took out two race wins. He finished a very solid fourth on 169 points in the championship, which was 78 points back on the eventual winner, Davide Falsetti. After briefly testing for Force India in 2011, Chilton also signed with Marussia as a test and reserve driver in 2012. Chilton already had backing from Marussia through Carlin, which was the team Chilton raced with in 2011 and 2012 in GP2, as well as in the past in British Formula 3. This, plus the fact that Chilton's father, who I should mention is a very rich man, was involved in the Carlin ownership, which basically guaranteed him a future drive at Marussia. His big opportunity would come the next year, as in 2013, Chilton was promoted to race driver for Marussia, thanks to paying an alleged £9.5 million for the seat. Wow, that's a lot of money. As expected, he did very little in a very uncompetitive car, scoring no points in 2013. And although the car was horrible, he still got comprehensively beaten regularly by Bianchi, and when both cars went on to finish, Bianchi finished ahead of Chilton 14 times out of 16, and additionally, Chilton was outqualified by Bianchi for the season, with the head-to-head -head record being 17-2 in favour of Bianchi. A positive was that he did finish every race in the year without a retirement, and he was the first ever rookie to achieve this, but I personally think that also has equally as much to do with the reliability of the car. A 14th place finish was his best finish for the year at the Monaco Grand Prix. And to be honest, the only time when Chilton really looked better th than Bianchi was when Chilton ended up being Bianchi in Jenga that year in Australia. He did end up being retained by Marussia for the 2014 season, and it actually was a promising start to the year, where he achieved a career best 13th at Australia, and he would match this result at the third race in Bahrain for the season. Unfortunately, this was the peak for Chilton that season, as the car was still ultimately uncompetitive, and Chilton was again well outperformed by Bianchi for most of the season. His 100% career race finishing record also went to dust as well when he crashed into his teammate Bianchi in the first lap of the Canadian Grand Prix that year. But the season ended prematurely for Chilton, as Marussia lacked the finances to be able to end the season racing. Sadly as well, Chilton was the only Marussia that entered in Marussia's last ever race at the Russian Grand Prix that year due to Bianchi's tragic crash at the previous race in Japan. Sadly, as we know, he succumbed to his injuries the following year. As Chilton was now without a race seat in Formula 1, he had stints in the FIA World Endurance Championship and the Le Mans 24-hour race in 2015, but his main focus was turned to the Indy cars where he entered into the Indy Lights in 2015, finishing an impressive fifth in the standings with Carlin, despite not starting in three races. In 2016, he moved into the top tier IndyCar series, where he still currently competes in to this day. His best finish since entering IndyCars was a great fourth place finish at the 2017 Indy 500, where he led for 50 out of the 200 laps. I guess in conclusion, Max is another of those drivers that 
paid their way into Formula 1, and although he did a decent job in the junior categories, he may have been just a little bit out of his depth in Formula 1 overall. And that's the video. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more F1 Driver Files videos, and tell me which driver you want me to do next.